Alright, so in this video we'll like to talk about the rendering settings of the particles. But before we begin with that, we'll like to comprehend the software render particles because these particles are not eligible to get rendered. These are the hardware render particles and we cannot you know just render them with the Maya software or maybe with the mental ray. You could get the render of the particles with the mental ray, but not in that, you know, uh, exact or you can say the proper form according to the production standards so for that we are required to change the particle type which is right now I have set that thing to the streak which was earlier you know called as a point particles so in which you can see there is the point appearing in each and every particles we can play with the point size and all and we can also gonna talk about the streak which is you know very important kind of the particle system and we can also get the exact behavior of the streak into another system or you can say another set of the particle that is called as the tube which we're going to talk about a little later well just to talk about a little bit more upon the streak one of the best thing regarding the streak is that you know it works totally upon the velocity of the particles as you can experience and you can see that so the particles here uh, near the tree they they just have you know accelerated and they do have a lot of velocities with them so these particles are keeping themselves with a little bit more stretchy way so the streak kind of particle actually takes the advantage of the particle velocity and based upon that it is going to create the stretchiness so if I put the tail fade to completely one you can see that the particle from the beginning to the end is consistently constant and we can also play around with the tail size which is you can say one is the by default and here you can see that we do have a lot of particles over here so obviously one is quite a big value so I would like to switch to the 0.5 and I think so that would be quite okay but the only issue is that these particles will not gonna get rendered so just to make them better and just to you know you can say to to get the rendering of the particles we would like to take care of the you can say the particle render type and we would like to change them to the tube so once we get the tube you can see that there's a lot of mess going all around here because it's a kind of a volumetric cloud and in the viewport 2.0 in Maya 16 we do have a very nice you can say the display of the particles but the only issue is that we need to you know let them settle so I need to click the current render type and here we do have got the radius 0 and 1 that we're gonna decide the forward and the backward direction of the streak so I like to get that thing to 0 0.050 and again to the radius 1 to 0 0.050 now you can see that we still do have a little bit more bigger values and I guess so we like to go for 3 and 0 0.030 0. that is still okay and I guess I would like to take the tail size back with the 1 it's not a problem and if we're going to go back to the wireframe mode by pressing 4 you can see that there is the linking between the particles so this is you know representing the streak in the earlier versions of the Maya you're gonna experience that if you're gonna take that thing in 2013 or maybe 2014 you're gonna see that there is a kind of you can say the chain system in which the streak the line is there and the particles represented with radius 1 is over here and radius 2 is over here but I think so after 2015 version they have changed it a lot if you still wanna go to a little bit more less versions you can say the radius size you can see that we can clearly see the streak here inside the particle systems now again get back to the I'm gonna press the shading mode again and I think so the radius uh, 0 0.020 and again radius 2 0 0.020 is quite okay with the tail size you can say 0 0.65 maybe or maybe 0 0.75 depending upon your artistic decisions so with that we can set the rending of the particles but there is still an issue but the issue is that you can see that the particles are all you can say the the grayscale particles and we do not have the shading upon the particles well we could get the shading in two ways first you have already noticed that we do have provided the opacity let me just gonna do one more thing I'll again gonna do the opacity PP so what I'm gonna do I can you know just delete this array mapper so now the particles are not being getting shrink and all the particles they do have the same opacity so what I'm gonna do next is that I'm gonna provide the color as well as the opacity PP that stand for the per particles so firstly we we'll like to add up the color and since the colors of the ambers are pretty much bright and it's also being an incandescent object 
And here you can see that we do have the three things, the shader, the per object, and the per particles. Well, we're going to utilize only the add per particle because the shader will not going to use it. And per object means that all the particle object that is, you know, inside this green box sections that represent the particle shape node will be allotted with the same shading values. Here in this case, we want the different values of the particle. So we're going to go for the add per particle attribute and click over here. With that, it's going to provide me with the RGB, red, green, blue per particles and let me just gonna go inside the create RAM and then gonna go forward inside the edit RAM we still do have the alpha map and here you can see kind of a change so the particles are now being showing me the black color while some of them are showing the mid gray and the top one are going to show me with the white color so in the beginning of our scene we wanted to set the particles with the you can say uh, a kind of a brighter values of the orange or you may just say the brighter values over here because they, it's just the beginning of the particles and in the later sections we may could go with the little orange values so with that we can set the values of the particles and over here I also like to increase the saturations of the particles no doubt we do have a provisions to edit them later inside the compositions okay that is pretty good and let's say we're gonna leave the interpolation again back to the smooth or we could also gonna go for the exponential down so in that case we do have much brighter values over here okay but the case is that we still left with the opacity PP so again okay one more thing before we move towards that I would like just like to you know name the ramp which is you can say I like to give it instead of ramp to let's say color underscore ram that's pretty good to remember and in case of the opacity we also gonna name that so under the opacity tab click the add per particles and I think so we already do have got the opacity PP with us so right click and let's say create a ram and with that again we're gonna have that this same interpolation which set to the linear two colors that means one is the bright over here if we're gonna take that thing over here you can see that the opacity has significantly reduced but that is not the case we want because here the black completely represents the um, you can say the complete dissipation or the fading of the particles which is you know quite an early in in this case so we like to get that thing to the extreme right corner section and the selective position is also one and here the interpolation I like to set to the smooth that is still you know quite a good and make sure that we do have the value here which is selected color set that thing to value 1 and here also we should have the value set that thing to the 0 because if in case we do have the values in the fraction let's say 0 0.2, 0 0.25 then particles will not gonna end up properly so we do need to be very careful regarding that aspect okay I hope so that may that is uh, that should be clearly understood to all of you now if we're gonna take the render of the particles now the only issue is that as you can see the particles in front of me which is you know the particles existing in the viewport 2.0 but what exactly the shader of the particles so we're gonna click over here and let's say control A and I would like to try out and finding the same thing in the attribute editor you're gonna see that we do have the initial particle SE stand for the shading engine and under the shading group we do have this volumetric shader assigned to the particle that is the default one so we'll not want to consider that because particles are you know still here in the case of the tube is a volumetric database so we would like to add another shader to that so what I'm gonna do here is that let me just gonna position it first of all properly and remove from the working area clicking over here I can go inside the volumetric shading since my are gonna support three kind of shading surface volumetric and displacement so I would like to click the volumetric and for that I need to click the particle cloud so once I have attached once I have created the particle cloud let me just gonna name it first of all and let's say the ambers underscore shader that's perfectly alright so we need to select the particles and let's say right click assign material to the viewport selections so what it gonna mean it simply means that now these particles which is the ambers have now been applied with the volumetric shader alright now we're gonna find that how do we gonna render these particles because still we are gonna face an issue and the issue is that if I'm gonna take you inside again in the hyper shade 
and if we're going to open up the shader you can see that under the common material attribute we still have this color transparency and incandescence however we do acknowledge that we do have also provided the rgb and opacity value but we are still not having the incandescence and here it is written transparency but we tweak the value that is called the opacity that means per particles of course we do have the color that is you can say is supporting the rgb but the case is completely different the particles are showing a different color and also you know they are their color is being getting changed with respect to their age so we do not have any provision inside here similarly we do have an opacity which is you can say a float value which represents a single value but in case of the transparency it is going to give me three values rgb separately so we need to find a provision for that also and for the incandescence because the particles you know are self illuminating objects these ambers they do you can say create the self illumination properties or incandescence so we do not have any provision to support the incandescence so what i can do here right now i can select the particles go into the particle shape node and click the general and inside the particle i'm going to find something at the bottom side there's something called as the incandescence pp stands for the per particle and click okay so with that we are quite stable enough to create the incandescence inside the particles also and which ramp would like to add the same we could add in the rgb that we have already added so we're going to go here create the ramp and since i already named that thing so I'd like to go for the color ramp and click the okay so once it is applied you can see that the particles have you know just you know increase their values because we have already added the uh, the incandescence inside the particles and what we may could do again we can go inside the overall color balance and can dip the color again a little bit less so that the particles will not going to have a lot of you can say the 2d kind of effect because the incandescence map also do tends to take away all of your shading and we're going to put the uh, you can say kind of a 2d or flatten you know view so we also need to take care of that aspect also so I guess we are completely done with the process of you know shading our particles and providing the software render particles but now we are left with the thing which is very important and that is how we're going to translate or you can say pass on the values of the opacity pp incandescence pp and rgb pp to the volumetric shader that we have already applied to the particles all right so in the next video we'd like to find the the suitable process and we'd like to comprehend the software rendering particle system all right with respect to the volumetric shader so let's go to the next clip